Panajay Srivastav is with us, Managing Director, Dimensions Consulting. Ajay, good morning. Good to have you with us. Thanks very much. Uh, what is your now construct on the market? It's been a while since we uh, chatted. Good morning. You turned uh, slightly bullish, I mean, last we chatted. No, I think, uh, see, you can't fight the momentum, so let's not fight it. I think there is a reasonable amount of buying which is taking place in terms of re-rating of mid-caps and uh, reasonably sized uh, larger mid-caps. I think that's where the action is. I think Nifty has done its bit to that extent for some time. It's going to be, not, it's going to be in a range. So the real action is going to be in the mid-cap at this point of time, and that's where the money is to be made or lost, I guess, Prashant. Yeah, don't fight the momentum, and action will be in mid-caps. Uh, but if you don't understand the momentum, you can choose to stay out of it, Ajay, right? <laughs> or oh, that is not an option. That, it is not an option for fund managers. Well, you can but, stay uh, out of regular it. regular people, it is. No. No, I say why it's not an option, because three things are happening at the same time. And I think we must understand that. One is that the government has finally woken up to the economic reality behind the growth numbers. So when you see a series of actions taking place, including the exit of the governor and the dissonance in the system, it's all a reflection of the fact that the reality of the economy is sinking inside the government. Now, that's a good part of it because so far it was seemingly in denial based on the headline numbers. So when you see the textile package, you know, one may argue about FDI, whether it's going to be good or bad for the economy. I am on the other side saying it's not going to be good, but leave it aside. But I think the important part is that there is realization seeping in that on the ground economy is in a very different shape compared to the headline number which is coming around. And you know, realization of the problem tells you that action will follow. All right, that's an interesting point. I'd like your uh, you know response to a few more questions there. But market is open, three points higher on the Sensex, and uh, absolutely unchanged on the Nifty. Half a point, zero point six points on this Nifty. ITC, Lupin, ONGC, Access Bank, bring them on. ICICI Bank, you've got uh, Aurobindo Pharma, uh, Bharti, Airtel, uh, Sipla, hardly any change, I mean, at all. So Reliance is down 0.15, Infosys is absolutely flat, HDFC Bank is down about a quarter, Mahindra is up 0.4%, HCL Tech is down about a third, HDFC Bank is down about a quarter, Sun Pharma is up 0.6%. M&M is uh, higher, Maruti is up 0.17, IRB infrastructure is up a quarter. Some uh, specific news related names also coming up on your screen. So that's what we have. Tata Motors, by the way, at about 478 is a top gainer. It's up 1%, it was down 2.5 yesterday. Lupin is up 3 quarters of a percent, Dr. Reddy's is up 3 quarters, Tata Motors DVR is up 3 quarters, Tata Motors DVR yesterday was down 3%. So, I mean, both the stock and the DVR are recovering a bit. Sun Pharma is up 0.4. I mean, actually, there are so there are two Tata Motors and there are three Pharma stocks. Those are the top five gainers on the Nifty right now, by the way, uh, at this point in time. Uh, 28 stocks are higher and uh, the rest of the 13 stocks are lower. NTPC is down 4%. It's actually down the most, 146.75 on NTPC. Then you got Bharti Infratel, which is down 3%. So, yeah, I mean, there are some meaningful losers. Power Grid is down 1.6 odd percent, 1.7, 1.6. Tata Power is down about 1 percent. ONGC and Tata Steel are down under 1 percent. But NTPC uh, clearly by far the top loser. Almost down 4 percent now. NTPC, we can put it up, please. So 146 and a half. Not heard anything on NTPC. Have you, Pankaj? What has come in, but uh, okay. not, not particularly. Not Infratel is, uh, has had a pretty volatile, I mean, uh, I think it's last 10 days. 329 on Infratel. So it's correcting again. I mean, it, uh, it, it recovered. Monday, Tuesday, it recovered by about 3% or so. Yesterday, it lost 25 and it's down another 25% at this point. I mean, you know, beginning of June, the stock was at what price? I mean, at, at about 390 bucks. Uh, Infratel now is at about 330 bucks, so it's lost uh, what about 20 odd percent or so actually uh, from that level. So that's the uh, market picture as things stand. Eight points higher on the Nifty and about what 50 odd points higher on the Sensex uh, at this point. Ajay Srivastava is with us. We'll put up the mid caps, small caps, micro caps, everything on up on your screen so you don't miss a thing. Ajay, you said the reality of growth has finally sunk in for the government and it's a good thing. Why do you say it's sunk in? 
Because I think so far they have been in a denial, the fact that, you know, changing the headline number of 7, 7.5 or 7.8, they were not really reacting to the ground level situation. So if you look at the textile package yesterday, it all tells you that the input into the system, whether it is an MP saying about the governor or anything, is finally now landing up somewhere purposeful to say that the economy is in trouble, unemployment is getting bigger, bigger problem. And therefore, I think you will see the response of the government. Some may be good, some may be bad, but at least we have a zone where the responses will come fast and furious now. Because with the new elections in two big states, UP, Punjab, economic reality hitting. And I think there was a, I would say that this is the starting of a fact that you will see in the next 12 to 18 months, lots of lots of action. How much they will work, I can't say. But action will come because the reality of uh, uncertain economic conditions at the d lower levels, including in the demand side, including on the employment side, is going to get responses now. So far, it had been oblivious to the, all the situation saying, growth is good, let's keep on going where we are. Now it's changing, and I think it will change much faster. You know, but just one textile uh, policy, textile package, uh, I mean, it's so it, it's not as if the government has not been doing a lot of things. This government has been extremely active, energetic, forceful about a whole host of things, right, over the last two years, in terms of new programs, uh, launches, enthusiasm. There's been no dearth of that. So why do you say, because of the textile policies, uh, suddenly they get it, they get the reality? Of You know, there is a, you know, Prashant, there is a difference between being enthusiastic and getting to the, you know, really down with the sleeves up and trying to get into the intricacies of the Indian economy. I think when you, when they come to a thing like a textile package, as micro as that, that gives you a significant pointer that something in the government has started to take. What, let's say, you know, talk of enthusiasm. What does enthusiasm translate to? In terms of, we may have all kind of policies. We saw the FDI policy. It didn't get you anybody to come into the country. Maybe with 100%, it might do something over three to five years. But the government is realizing that that's not going to change or move the needle before the next two ele elections or maybe even the next national elections. So I think looking at from a very, very narrow perspective, of trying to get people back into the fold, trying to get the economy moving again at the ground level. There is a need to do something very different than announcements. Announcements have been good, enthusiasm has been good, but practically nothing filtered down. Now we are saying, let's do bottoms up. Let's start hitting the bottom end of the cycle, which is the way the economy has been hit the worst, and try to see if we can do something. I'm not sure it will do wonders in the short term, but I think you'll see a lot more short-term measures compared to long-term policy initiatives, which take a long time. And, you know, talking about NTPC, etc., there is nothing there to be done there. You know, we have a power surplus country right now where the economy is dawdling. So what do you do with the power sector? You can build more plants, but you can't because power is surplus. So if you look at major infrastructure sectors, the ports have got capacity, the power has got capacity, railways has no money, they can announce 5 lakh crore, but we have not seen any project coming up so far. So this is the ground level interventions which will make the difference in my view, and I think it's a signal that ground level interventions are on the way. You know what this uh, seems to me, and uh, uh, humor me, Ajay, uh, this seems that you're abandoning, your, uh, abandoning the bear camp. <laughs> you know, the skeptic, the, you're abandoning the skeptics. And that's a good thing. I have no, no problem no. with that. No. But in a way, you're kind of sort of throwing up your hands and saying, well, I'm done. I, I'm not making money shorting. And let me just get on the momentum. Ride the momentum. That is what it seems to me like, Ajay. No. Okay. Let me put it this way. I'm not a dogmatic person who's a bear or a bull by nature that I must be one or the other. But what I am today is that I have to recognize the fact that two things, which I've always said very important, that these initiatives make sense in the shorter term. You know, I don't know whether long term is going to make sense. So you will see market exuberance. And I have still hold on to the theory that this is a market to book profits. You know, yeah, there can be a long term saying that over 20 years we might reach 20,000 in Nifty. Well, that may well be true. But in keeping a shorter term perspective, profit booking has given more returns than just blind adding up to the position, and we can see that for the last five years. So to an extent, if you're saying I'm banding a camp, I'm still in the same camp saying that profit booking is critical, but recognize when the government does the correct thing, we recognize it. When the government is on a policy framing institute which has no, nothing to do with the local economy, we will come and say that. I am still saying that this is a signal. It may peter out in the end, I don't know the answer. 
but well or global events may come and overwhelm us because let's be honest global flows into the country have tapered off in the last 6 months to almost zero or negligible levels so we are in a situation where the market liquidity is all domestic it's not global money is not going out but it's not coming in it can change dramatically either ways so you got to be cautious while remaining on the fact that there is something will be done now how much and how fast is a call you will take the reason i say mid cap story is re-rating i think there is a recognizing the fact that there is a strong liquidity in these stocks money is moving in there is a need to find out the winning stories and we have always you know you're saying short position you know we discussed lots of mid cap stories on our channel number of times we have been a great votary that there are mid cap stories in any kind of market even today when you go across the market there will be mid cap stories to be sold or bought you raise infratel now infratel was an expensive stock at 400 or 420 at 310 or 300 or 280 it might become a very valuable buy at the point of time so the you know, market also moves the prices move you got to move with the market and like a stock like infratel i say at 270 280 if it comes down to that or 300 you start to buy into it and not sell at 300 mm, interesting interesting so uh, what are you doing now ajay give me some specifics give me something to work with You know, I, I think the legal framework doesn't allow to go too much of specifics. But as I said, we have been heavily investing into three kind of companies in the last six months. We have sold off all our NBFC portfolios, by and large. We booked our profits there. That's as I said. They are very expensive stocks, very good companies. Maybe we'll revisit them when the time comes. But right now, they're expensive, so we sold off. Now, we, then we moved into lots of the media-related stocks, media, pictures, uh, cinemas, travel, these kind of companies, we moved into it, and they've given us a decent return. So, you know, sectoral churn is also making sense in, the, in a situation like where we are, where market is range-bound, flavors of day come, economies are getting, companies are getting re-rated. So, three major sectors that we have done in at this point of time are we are invested in is media is one sector, which includes cinemas, of course, and then travel is the second sector. And third, we started to go back into pharma again. We, about eight months back, we sold off pharma completely. It's corrected a lot. We think it's time to get back in. So we are back into pharma at this point of time again. Okay. Uh, so media, travel, cinema, right? And pharma. pharma. Okay, so I mean, when you say cinema, you mean uh, the likes of PVR, right? I mean, exhibition uh, uh, type of stocks. And uh, PVR, I know both what? would be both would qualify as cinemas, I guess. You mean uh, media? You mean what? Broadcasters? See, me media were these uh, content companies. Yeah. Both. both. Both broadcasters as well as the content companies which produce movies. Both. Uh huh. Both. Uh -huh. any, any thoughts on, but you don't uh, think, I mean, the, the biggest is Z, you, you don't think it's, you're still comfortable with valuations, etc.? I mean, there's Sun as well, which is at the other extreme. Expensive? No, we are not in Z at all. No, Z, we are not there at all. We don't have a position in Z, expensive. For the time being, Prashant, as a strategy, we are keeping away from nifty stocks by and large, and we are sticking on to the non-nifty stocks as a strategy. If something comes in nifty, like ITC, for instance, you know, when you say re-rating your mind, I have always maintained that if the leadership changes, I am the biggest buyer of ITC. I think with the leadership change, we are going to revise our stand on ITC because I think finally, once, if there's an actual change in leadership, you will find the company doing correctly what it should do. Give the money back to the shareholders from the tobacco business and stop ruining its money and spending money on hotels, paper boards, consumer, where they get no returns out of it. So I think a re-rating is required for companies like ITC only in Nifty because leadership change can mean a dramatic change in the strategy if it does. I would doubt because that would happen, but uh, I would still play on the fact that a change of strategy could mean lots of money coming the shareholders' way and re-rating of ITC, which has been wasting its thousands of crores on industries and sectors which never made money. So you look at, in Nifty, if you look at it, you would try to look at ITC as one of the prime candidates for re-rating at this point of time. But do you think this announcement really means leadership change? Or you think it'll be a situation like what we've seen in LNT? Mr. Nayak is still there. Uh, and and it, what do you think? Well, 
Well, my guess is that there is a realization in the system. So the kind of money being spent has kind of you know tapering down a little bit over the last one, one and a half years. It's not fully there. You may well be right that the policy may remain the same. It's only the position and the name changes, which will be unfortunate. But my guess is that the spending spree has run its course and has not given the returns. The little legitimate economic reason for a company to keep spending money on hotels where you keep making losses or consumers where you don't make money. And nobody's a buyer for the consumer company. Today, if you want to sell that consumer company, I doubt any great buyer is going to be there for the company. Paper boards and paper business is kind of marginal. So my guess is that apart from the leadership change, the economic reality could start working in the favor of investors compared to the managers who have been squandering this money. No, so you, uh, you, you jump in here uh, as far as ITC goes? Well, we started, yes, I think we will start taking a position. We've been watching it for a while, but now is the time has come for us to start moving in there because if it happens, it can lead to a very long-term dramatic re-rating of the company. You know, I would say simplest example. Let's split the company into two, like what happened in U.S. Tobacco companies were split. One was tobacco company, one was all other businesses. That's wonderful for the shareholders because they get a consumer company free and then whenever it gets divested. So I'm looking at a reorganization. I'm looking at a longer term situation where we should get lots of dividend flows and of this company and hopefully sale of one of the other lack of the other businesses, which should give a substantial one-time cash inflow. So business reorganization or lack of at least the money coming to shareholders should increase. So yes, we are looking at it. We haven't started taking positions, but we should, I think, in a kind of in a short-term horizon, look at start getting into it. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the, the, when, uh, just to go back to media, uh, as far as broadcasting goes, you said both broadcasters, NMS was broadcasters, then what are we talking about? If you said no Z. See, D D see, DTH is one of our favorites because that is where I think you will see corporate mergers and sale action are going to take place. I think you will see the liberalization of FDI has taken place. This is an industry where you cannot come into the country and create capacity on your own, so you got to buy the companies on the ground. So you need to see that there is tremendous value in the DTH companies. Airtel will not sell because it's part of the intrinsic setup, so there are only one or two companies left which you want to invest in because I think there is a tremendous amount of uh, value in these companies on a sale proposition. So you were trying to buy into a DTH proposition at this point of time because sooner or later there will be a sale or a merger or some corporate action in this industry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't think there is any, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a couple of years away at least, right? I mean, players like uh, online streaming services taking off and kind of impact, starting to impact revenues. I and mean, we are still, I guess, some time away, at least many years away before one has to start worrying about that. Uh, but maybe not that far away in the future as well, as uh, broadband, etc., improves quite a bit, right? Uh, so, no broadcasters then, Ajay? Well, you know, <coughs> broadcasters are linked to the economy by and large. So you need to see a big revival in the economy for them to change the paradigm. It's a, you know, this number of people in the market have broadcasters have become so large number of channels and number of this thing, that I don't know whether what's the way to grow this whole business for each person. You know, there's so many channels, regional, national, Hindi, English, everything, etc. One would tend to, you know, just step back and wonder, how does one each grow its own channel at this point of time with, with this plethora of 100 or 200 channels in this country? Right. So there is, I think, uh, some kind of a situation where there is competition, there is intense price rivalry, there is there's just too many players in the business today at this point of time. So, well, I've asked my people to look at what could be the best consolidation plays because sooner or later consolidation will happen. But I think it's a while because broadcasters are also not only economic entities, also give power to the people who own it, promoters, etc. So it may not be easily saleable or people may not divest it. So I think competition, plethora of uh, rivals, as I think an economy not doing great, so revenues are not something which is going to jump up on its own put you at disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis this investment. Uh, but uh, yeah, corporate action may happen in some cases, but as an industry, I would wonder how e each person can grow in such a crowded space. 
Ajay, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Good speaking with you. Appreciate you coming on with that perspective. Thank you indeed. You're welcome, Prashant.